most all your crops, corn, soybeans, wheat, barley, we grow sulfur something anytime we're putting out nitrogen, we always add sulfur in with it. We use sulfur nowadays a lot on our soils to amend the soils. Soils can get out of balance. So if you got cations, anions, or cations are a positive charge, anions are a negative charge, and everything tries to balance. And sometimes we get cation dominant, calcium, magnesium, uh, get full in the soil, and can really have negative effects. So we use sulfur products to help amend the soil, to help heal it, and make it more, get more plant nutrients available when we can balance the soil better. In turn, helps the plant pull more nutrients in instead of pulling just what's available. You know, another thing with sulfur is important in the plants is it kind of goes hand in hand with nitrogen in the protein th synthesis in the plant. So we've got to kind of have a nice balance of nitrogen and sulfur in the plant to syn synthesize the protein from the nitrogen. So sulfur is a big key in that piece. Once we get to the plant, it has a lot of functions in photosynthesis and, and helps that reaction. And soybeans, it has a key in nodule formulation. So like every node on a soybean plant is important because that's where you get your soybean clusters. And that's where we get our pods and our seeds at. So the more nodes we have, the more pods and seeds we potentially can have. It, it actually it helps the plant quality and helps it metabolize nutrients better. The soil in Iowa especially has great potential, and as growers, we are so far from it, it's, it's humorous, okay? But what happens is we get out of balance from a chemistry perspective, and the nutrients in plant foods, specifically the sulfur, and the micronutrients and the carbon help us balance the soil. This soil where we're standing right here wouldn't shock me if it's not 80 or 85% calcium, and we need the sulfur to balance that out. We can't really look at plants and see sulfur deficiency. I mean, unless it's really past, past the bad point, um, it'll start showing up uh, from what the research we've done here at Integrated Ag. There's ways to test for it. You know, we used to get sulfur from the sky, you know, through, through gases and stuff, either through emissions from vehicles or whatever, but now with regulatory stuff, and uh, take diesels, for instance, they, they take the sulfur out of it. So we've lost that free sulfur in the air, so to speak. So now we're having to learn how to apply more sulfur and more timely matters to the plants because this plant can't absorb it because there's none there from the sky, so. Acid rain, yes, yes, that's what it used to be. And used, I, when I grew up in school, we got taught that acid rain was gonna kind of ruin the earth, you know, that was a big concern, but it wasn't as dire as what they told us, but it, you know, acid, the sulfur was in the water when it came down, but it was plant available. So plants were soak, soaking it up at the time. So we don't put any nitrogen, nitrogen out now that don't have sulfur to it. You know, whether it's uh, liquid nitrogen, it's 28005. When you look at the ratios in a tissue sample, you know, and you'll see it, they want a, you know, a 10 to 1 ratio of nitrogen to sulfur, you know. It's what's needing to keep carry that plant further. Whatever you do, if you're putting nitrogen out, make sure you got some sulfur there for that corn, wheat, and soybean crop because it's, it's very essential in grain production.